Now that we've touched on all of the major players in the specific immune system, what I thought I would do in this video is kind of do a summary so it all fits together a little bit. So the first person or character we got exposed to was the B cell, which I'll always do in blue. It's the B cell right like that. And what made that interesting is that it every B cell has its own specific, or they have membrane-bound antibodies. But for each B cell, the membrane-bound antibodies on each specific B cell had its own variable portion. So this B cell, it'll be variable right like that, variable like that. And if if I were to draw another B cell right here, I would draw the variable portion a little bit different. And this why this is why uh, different actual B cells will respond to different antigens or different pathogens that have entered our system. And a B cell gets activated. It needs to get, let me, let me write all this down, actually. So if we're talking about a B cell to get activated, so let's talk about what happens when it gets activated or what needs to happen. So activation, it needs binding of the pathogen onto one of these membrane-bound antibodies. So binding of pathogen, or maybe we call it immunogen or antigen, antigen. But that's not all. I mean, sometimes that's that's all you need. But usually, you also need to be stimulated by T cell. So T helper T cell act stimulation. And you might say, where does the helper T cell stimulate this guy? Well, B cells were also antigen presenting cells, so he'll suck this guy in, break him out, and present him on an MHC2 complex. So that's an MHC. Let me do it someplace where I can draw a T cell coming in. Well, let's say this is an MHC2 complex. This guy gets cut up. Part of him gets presented right here. And then an activated helper T cell. An activated helper T cell whose variable portion of their T cell respond, uh, receptor is specific to this could come along, could come along, and activate this character. Uh, I'm not drawing that receptor well, but this is a that right there is a helper T cell, and that is the B cell. Now, once it's activated, it starts differentiating, and it differentiates. It starts cloning itself, and it could either turn into effector cells. And this is true of B cells or T cells. Once they get activated, they either they keep cloning and they either turn to effector cells or memory cells. Memory cells stick around a lot longer so that in the future you're going to have many more of this version of B cell. So if you get the same antigen or pathogen in the future, the likelihood of it bumping into this type of B cell is going to be higher so the response will occur faster. The effector B cells, effector B cells produce, they essentially turn into an antibody-making machines. So they'll say, gee, this antibody bonds to this antigen that we have in the system now. Let me just produce a ton of them. So it starts building up all of the cellular machinery, and it just starts producing antibodies like crazy. And I want to point out one thing that my wife pointed out to me when I was she overheard me making the last video. and. She's a fellow in hematology, and part of a lot of hematology is immunology. So I definitely have to defer to her. She is the expert on this. In the last video, I kind of, you know, very hand wavingly said, "Oh, you know, B cells. Once they get activated, if they're the effector B cells, they produce antibodies." I want to be very clear. It is only the effector B cells that produce the antibodies, and the common term for them, the common term for them. If someone were to walk up to you and say, "What?" what cells in the body are producing antibodies, you wouldn't be wrong if you said effector B cells, but the common term that people expect to hear are plasma cells. Plasma cells. Plasma cells and effector B cells are the same thing. But normally when they say what happens to a B cell when it starts producing antibodies, they then call it a plasma cell. They don't call it a B cell anymore. And I want to make that very clear, because my wife is like, well, I have attendings that if they ask me uh, what, what cell in the body produces antibodies, and if you said B cell, they would say, no, wrong. It's a plasma cell. Or if you even said effector B cell, they wouldn't be happy. They wanted to hear plasma cell. That's This is the common term used in immunology and apparently, and, and, and apparently uh, uh, 
uh, uh, rheumatology circles. Did I just tell my say my wife is a hematologist? No, no, she's studying rheumatology. I get confused with all the pathology sometimes. Anyway, that's what the B cells do, and these antibodies can then go attach things and mess up viruses and and antigen. Well, viruses are in, instances of antigens and bacteria, and 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 tag them for pickup by macrophages or other types of phagocytes. Those were the B cells. Then. You have your T cells. And here I'm going to talk about T cells a little bit differently than I had in the last few videos, just to give a little bit more of a nuance. So there's two types of T cells. And you might be able to say, hey, there are helper T cells and cytotoxic T cells. And you're not wrong. But what I'm going to do is do a slightly different di differentiation, just so that you, you, you are familiar with these terms. So there's two types of T cells, just like that. All T cells have T cell receptors. Let me draw the T cell receptors. T cell receptors just like that. But they also have these other proteins on them. And some of them have these proteins called, I'll just call it, I'll draw it like that, called CD4 proteins. And some of them have, I'll do it in a different color, and some of them have what's called CD8. CD, CD8. So this one right here would be called a CD8 positive T cell. It has the CD8 proteins on it. And this would be called a CD4 positive CD4 positive T cell. I've never used these words before. You're like, gee, where, where are these coming from? Now, the CD4 receptor is the thing that wants to bind. This is the thing that helps to go to the MHC two complexes. So most CD4 T cells are helper T cells. So this is you know, most of the time. And, and I want to make it very clear. Immunology is a very, I mean, this field, people are discovering things on a regular basis. So people are still understanding these things. And there's all sorts of special cases. But usually when people talking about uh, talk about CD4 positive T cells, they're talking about helper T cells. So this is normally going to be a helper, a helper T cell, or you could call it a T helper, just like that. Likewise, the CD8 proteins, these are attracted to the MHC1 complex. These are attracted to MHC1. You can kind of say this is what brings them to the to the, the cells that have the cancer that are that have expressed antigens on their MHC1 complex. So most of the time, CD8 positive T cells are cytotoxic. Cyto Toxic, so cytotoxic T cell. And oftentimes, before a cell gets activated, they just describe it as a CD4 T cell or a CD8 T cell. And then after it becomes, for example, in a cytotoxic T cell, after it becomes activated and starts uh, wanting to kill things, uh, then maybe you call it cytotoxic. But this is all, you know, this is all wordplay. I think you get the general idea. But just to remember what they do, this guy we just said it'll. He'll bond. He wants to bond to the MHC complex. So you have MHC complex plus presenting some antigen, plus presenting some antigen. This is MHC1 right here. We learned in the last video every nucleated cell in the body expresses an MHC1 complex. So this is the case where something wacky is happening inside this cell. Maybe a virus has infected it. Maybe it's cancerous. It's just it's it, it needs to die. Otherwise, it's going to keep producing protein or keep producing viruses if it's infected by a virus, or otherwise it's going to keep dividing if it's a cancer and infect the rest of the body. So the CD8 kills infected cells, kills, I'll just say bad cells, because I don't know if you can, uh, cancer really isn't an infection, kills bad cells, cells that are, you know, if you don't kill them, they're going to keep producing viruses or keep splitting and, and, and spreading the cancer. While T cells, they're attracted to Professional antigen presenting cells, so, and I always do a dendritic cell right here because those are the best antigen presenting cells, and they have CD, uh, sorry, MH2 complexes, and it's digested some antigen and it presents it right there, and then that activates that activates the helper T cell, and then when the helper T cell, when the helper T cell, all of these guys once they're activated, they all go into effector, effect. They all start differentiating into effector and memory cells. An effector helper T cell it does a couple of things. It can, so when we're talking about helper T cell, it can activate, 
It can activate B cells. And it also releases cytokines. It all, let's say this guy gets activated, he'll also start releasing these chemicals, which are really those alarm bells that tell other people to uh, really get in gear. Maybe you know B cells and, and cytotoxic T cells start proliferating more rigorously. Actually, part of the the T cell act the that cytotoxic T cell activation uh, can be assisted or kind of uh, given a be given a boost by these cyto by these cytokines, so by these alarm bells. So this guy is the alarm ringer, alarm, alarm. While the CD8 cells or the cytotoxic T cells, when in their effector mode, they kill cells. They kill cells. And of course, in the memory mode, there's just a bunch of copies of these originals around that are ready and more than they originally were. So that in the future, if something like this or something like this occurs, they're going to be activated faster because they're going to be bumped into faster. So hopefully that clears up a little bit. And I introduced a little bit more terminology. But I really want to stress my wife's point because she said, hey, you don't want people out there saying uh, uh, B cells produce antibodies, even though it is effector B cells. Once activated B cells that are differentiated into effector B cells, those are what are produced producing antibodies because when they go to medical school people are going to want to hear plasma cell thank you for watching this video don't forget to like the video